This is Priscilla Batzel. I'm in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Fluid Art Studio. These are my new Vivid Intense colors. They're acrylic paints, high flow fluid acrylics from Color Art. There's a coupon code for probably 20% off, very close to or right under Show More, along with the description. So what I'm going to do today is do something I used to do when I was just beginning doing fluid art because the viscosity of my mixtures is a whole lot looser and I'm assuming it will also flow more nicely. So I want to do a sky and a landscape and I'm going to use some of my Artist Loft white. I did mix up some of the Vivid Intense white which is basically used to tint in my opinion. Wow, where did that come from? Well I'm not going to deal with that right now. Got, that's unusual. I just want a puddle and I made it hard for me to spin my turntable, so that's interesting. I'll just do what everybody else who doesn't have a turntable does and move the canvas. So I used probably more than I need, so I'm just going to spread it all the way down. I'm not used to using a less viscous, I'm not used to using a light mixture. And it's been a long, long, long time since I was doing really very f easily flowing paintings because I tend to like the way my prism pores and primary elements dry with my mixture is looks a lot like stained glass and that's really what I what I'm hoping for so I'm thinking <laughs> since I've got this all spread I might as well go for the thinner area up top and I'm just going to play. I want to just, just use my spatula, but I also want to use the quinacridone nickel azo gold from Vivid Intense and see what happens. Well, it helps if you get the tab off the top and then unscrew the bottle. Now I am going to take some of that white that I put into some pouring medium which is my normal mixture of either Vivid Enamel or Vivid Polypore with a little bit of Josonia varnish to give some glossiness and some GAC 800, usually 25%. And I'm trying to decide what to do. I'm going to use, ha. Huh. And then the only change that I've made in the recipe is after I'm done mixing it like I mix everything else, then I add 10% Floetrol. This is the Vermilion. This is another Vivid Intense. And since I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm just going to do it. I was going to tip it. Since I have a spatula in my hand, my colors are on my canvas. I think I'm just going to keep playing. I gotta get that. I have an edge catcher handy, so let's use some of the quinacridone magenta. I guess I'll do something with a puddle another time. That just went down way too easy. I could leave that right like it is. That's not usually how it works out. I don't have any colors on the edge of my canvas, so it would behoove me to stroke across and give myself a little bit of color on the edge. I have often said that these are best framed, but it doesn't keep me from still wanting to add some color to the side. So that's rather subtle. So I think what I'm going to do is take my other colors. This is the chromium green. I'm just going to keep taking colors and add them into a puddle in the bottom. This is the yellow green. I'm going to add some of the quinacridone nickel azo gold to it and I'm not sure why but I'm just going to keep adding colors and if it's if it's kind of freaky, that's okay. This is Hansi Yellow that I added a little bit of orange to. 
This is a blue black. All of these are vivid, vivid intense. This is a vivid intense added to frosted, which is a primary element, excuse me, which is a prism pour, my mistake. And uh, I have some phthalo green added to it, but I also added some magenta. And I could definitely pour this. I'm just going to keep adding colors. I have, this is the phthalo green. And what else do I want to add? I've got some turquoise. You know, I've got some other colors too. Oh, the turquoise is gorgeous. Let's let's grab some of this chestnut, which is a primary element, I promise. Let's make sure it's shaken. It's been a little while. Now, I'm not using anything shiny, but I might want to just give myself permission to add some gold. Some Mayan gold, anyway. Not sure how that's going to go. And I could add some silver. True silver, prism pour. And I could probably swipe that across, but I want to grab... You know what? I'm going to use this piece of cardboard as an edge catcher and see what happens. It run down. I'm always saying you could use an edge catcher and then I I mean a piece of cardboard is an edge catcher and then I don't do it. So this time I'll have to try and prove it. So I should make up a cup of colors because I think that that might be just as interesting if not more so. Let that go as far as it wants to. I kind of wanted different sections that's why I didn't pour more paint in there. And I kind of like it to go right back again. It's looking a little bit, a little lagoony. But I am going to do what I said I was going to do. And I think I know right where there's a good cup. I'm using my silicone cup since I know my usual ring pouring cup is in the bucket. So I'm just going to keep, this is the um, Vivid Intense Mars Violet. I'm going to go for some of that blue-black. And I don't care if the colors are weird. This is the phthalo green again. And this is the chromium green. This is the yellow green, all vivid intense. Start over with the Mars violet. Let's use a different violet. We've got a um, a deep violet. I'm going to skip the brown, but I am going to put some of the Mayan gold prism pour in there. And I didn't put any quinacridone magenta in there, and I want some. Excuse me. Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Different horse, different color. Now you see I move my edge catcher down. I do still squeeze it. Just getting used to using all of these things and I'm definitely looking forward to experimenting. Take that out of here. weird colors, but that's okay. Now I have a Princeton Art Tool Catalyst Spatula, which is round, as long as I have it, I usually leave it, and I haven't left it there. Of course not. Well, I'll use a different one. I'm going to use a number one. Silicone cups are great to scrape. If they're large enough, they're easy to scrape out of. So those two things, well, the spatula is going in the bucket. I'm going to look at this for a minute. 
I think I want more Hansa, Hansa yellow. Or is that Indian yellow? That's Indian yellow. This is the Hansa yellow. Oh, and I just put my finger right in my sky. Let's see what happens when I use my edge catcher. I'm kind of glad I didn't paint the top of the canvas because that gives me something to hold on to that's still dry. Now I usually just rest rest my hand against part of this and I'll squish it up. And most generally speaking you can use a spatula to take whatever you want off of the edge catcher and put it back in the painting. That looks like a thing that does not belong. And it is. I know just what that is. That's one of those tabs. Now I got kind of close to what I was thinking about going after, which was creating a bunch of different areas. Looks like I'm going to lose something off my end. I like to go up. I see I have another thing in there. So if I let everything go down, then usually after I make a puddle, I can also throw it right back up again and squish it. So it makes a second layer of colors. I've got a white space down at this other end and I'm going to try and drip onto that. Actually, I'm going to try and keep going until I get to this white spot. Not that it would be a bad thing to have a white spot, but I'm just not all that eager to do it right now. And I don't have to let all the paint fall down over the white corner, but I'm going to do it anyway. I thought I could definitely scrape off my edge catcher and retrieve that paint with my spatula. This is going in the bucket. I'm going to definitely be looking for bubbles. I'm wishing that I had left a set of tweezers someplace I could find them and there they are. Yay! So my edges are better covered than I thought they would be. It's definitely time to give a little bit of a torch. This is a few bubbles. And I'm going to have to turn this around. You're getting a better view of it than I am. I've got paint coming off the end, which is the perfect time to grab it and put it someplace else. Looks like we got a low hanging cloud coming down over the mountain. I need a paper towel or something. I've just stuck me. Getting used to looser viscosity. Definitely interesting. I'll just keep this sponge handy. Now what do I want to do to that? Much, Not much of anything actually. I'm going to grab another little tiny spatula and some of the color This is a little makeup app application applicator, like a mask applicator, and I really like it. It's it's excellent when I go to clean out my containers from mixing paints. It's silicone on both ends. I think it came in a two pack. No, I'm not into wrap. Kidding. Just gonna use whatever I've got. on my edge catcher and on my spatula. And it's kind of surreal for sure. Let me see what I've got. I want to scrape off <laughs> too many toys. We'll just wipe that off right there. And I'd like to show you how I get the paint off.
and then utilize it. Because there's, in my mind, there's no reason not to. And there's GAC 800 in this in these mixes, so. And you could make your horizon line dark with purple or blue with, with mountains or basically whatever you want. It doesn't have to be realistic. Or in my case, slightly mucky alternative. I'm not minding this though. And I think I'm just about done. I might want to put trees and a sun in tomorrow. I don't think I can do that now. I've got three minutes to decide if I might want to put some trees in. And that would require me to grab some black paint, which I do have handy. I'll just abuse my, my little edge catcher for the moment. And see what I can do with some Let's just grab a, um, a skewer. Oh, not with a big paintball on it though. And wipe it off if you gather a bunch of other paint. And I can always just Looks like it's going to get sucked in but still leave a good mark behind, which I really don't mind. And it'd be better if I didn't stick that edge catcher right in the painting. Your brain will decide what kind of trees they are. Or they might just be very surreal trees at the moment. When that timer goes off, we'll be down to the last minute, so I should tell you whatever I'm going to tell you. I kind of like them being very surreal like that. And I could definitely augment them tomorrow by adding a few marks, or branch shapes, or even another couple colors. trying to build myself a forest here. But I'm not sure that it's anything but surreal no matter what. I do see a bubble there. I want to turn it around. I really want to put some more trees in. Once you get started it's addictive. I don't know what kind of landscape this is. Maybe it's on another planet. In any case, this is Priscilla Batzel in Spring Hill, Florida, with a somewhat different... I got some paint on my silicone mat that catches my, my overspray, and uh, it's the perfect place to put it right along the top. I'm going to have to fake that out, that top. Let's get some of this out of here so you can, so I can swivel. It's different, and I like different. Now it's not shimmery, so if I zoom in, it's just to show you a close-up of the patterns in there. And I really could have swiped and made patterns that was going to fall over. And I saw stuff, but I'll look for it. No, there's something. I'll look for stuff after. And I'll see if I can zoom in now. It's kind of cool. I like it. I love you guys. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Check my link tree for Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter links, Facebook group, Expressionist, Fluid Art Studio, and more by Priscilla Batzel. My spring clothing is under the video. I have t uh, not just spring clothing. I have Legalerist and um, Society6 also on the link tree. Might give lessons to the house in Spring Hill, Florida, and I do sell my artwork. Please give me a thumbs up and share my videos if you have 